Have I ever got a treat for you? Today, I'm actually introducing you to the family. (laughs) I'm introducing you to Karen, who is really our community manager in Facebook. She's currently in all of our Facebook group. She is fantastic, and this is why. She's been there, not only navigating our programs, but coming with a problem to solve to our programs and in need of some resources, both inside and outside Flipping 50. So we're going to hear her story today of how she found Flipping 50 and so very fortunate that she found me. And when I looked out in our community and said, you know, I'm looking for someone who wants to be in our groups as a peer coach. There is nobody better than someone who's already been in our groups for a long time. So if that also describes you, by the way, and you're interested in having a little bit more proactive involvement behind the scenes with Flipping 50 to be a part of the movement, helping women get the energy and vitality that they want, then reach out to us. You can leave a comment in the show notes or reach out at Deborah at flipping50.com. And this is Deborah Atkinson. You're listening to Flipping 50, where I address your top struggles and concerns and hopefully inspire you. I share what to eat, how to move, and how to change your mindset. Sometimes about what to eat and how to move so that you can have the energy and the vitality that you want, need, and deserve in this second half. Okay, let's meet the family. Karen Wathen is a retired educator, including elementary and junior high school administrator and director of curriculum and instruction in a district serving over 75,000 students. And now she's serving us. Thanks for being here, Karen. I'm excited to be here. Thanks, Deborah. <laughs> All right. So I I want to start at the beginning. And what I know is like so many other women who may be listening right now who are in menopause, you were having some health issues and you couldn't seem to find the answers to it. So take us back a couple of years and let us know what was going on. So I had been doing hormone replacement therapy um, with bioidentical hormones for a number of years, and I had been doing intermittent fasting for almost a year. I had read a couple books about it and and knew it was good for my health. Excuse me, my cholesterol and my triglycerides were good, Um, but during an annual checkup, my gynecologist, who I absolutely love, suggested that I have a calcium test on my heart, just as a precaution. So the results of the test said that my heart was fine, but I learned during that test that I was insulin resistant, which basically meant I was Mm pre-diabetic. And to me, that was shocking, Um, shocking to my gynecologist as well, because I was at an ideal weight. Um, I was working out regularly. I ate what I thought was a very healthy diet. Um, In fact, I was a vegetarian. Uh, The cardiologist told me not to worry about about the insulin resistance, that I, the intermittent fasting would take care of that. So I proceeded to go forward. So did you continue with it? How long did you do it? So I... I continued with the intermittent fasting and my my eating stayed the same, my exercise stayed the same. So I continued with it and after a year I repeated the same test. And um again, I was insulin resistant. Hmm. So um I talked to my gynecologist and um this was during the pandemic, so I was on a phone call with her and um I guess like any health professional would say to someone who is diabetic or pre-diabetic is you need to cut back on your carbs. So I remember this conversation really vividly because my husband could hear the conversation and he piped up, 
she never eats carbs. Maybe a potato chip once in a while, but she never eats carbs. And for me at that point, um, I was thinking about carbs being things like chips or bread or desserts or even potatoes. I, I wasn't eating them. And because, you know, that's what we had learned. Carbs are bad. But during this same period of time, I began watching my weight creep up. And in fact, every week or two, when I would get on the scale, my weight was up and so was my body fat percentage. I was still eating healthy and I was still exercising, but I was definitely going the wrong way. So I I really became worried because at that rate, I figured I was going to be diabetic in a very short time. Wow. Yeah. So big concerns. So keep going. What happens next? Well, so I decided to go elsewhere for an answer. And so I called my primary care doctor, the one I would go to just if I had a sore throat. Um, And um, because I knew that she ran a weight loss clinic. So I thought, okay, this, this is an option for me. And so her suggestion was that I cut back to a thousand calories a day Mm. and she prescribed me a diet pill. So I took that diet pill for one day and felt like I had had about 20 cups of coffee. Oh my gosh. And I couldn't, I couldn't do that. And, and I knew that if I ate a thousand calories a day, basically if I opened my mouth and put food in, I was done. Um, (laughs) So, and I also had read enough about weight loss that I knew it was going to kill my metabolism. And in fact, in the phone call, I had asked her about that. So if I eat a thousand calories a day and I lose the weight, what happens after I stop eating a thousand calories a day? But basically she dismissed my question. So. (laughs) Wow. Okay. So one day of the diet pill and <laughs> <It's> very committed. <laughs> uh yeah, well, I think really very committed to your own health, following your gut. And what happened next? Well, I found you. <laughs> so <laughs> like I said, it it was during the pandemic and my gym was closed, like most gyms. And so I went on YouTube searching for Um, strength training videos because I'd been mostly doing machines and looking for hit videos. And I ran into some of your videos, which I used and loved. And that led me to your TED Talk. And so I listened to your TED Talk and I began following you on Facebook, which then led me to listening to your podcasts. And when the cafe opened, I joined. And I remember that we had access to the metabolism makeover for a couple of weeks early. So that's where I started. And many, many of the things that you spoke of piqued my interest, not only because they were in line with what my beloved gynecologist was saying, but you were mirroring much of what I was experiencing. So I started with the Stronger program. I loved it. Um, My mood was better. If you remember, we were in the pandemic, so I had some anxiety. It helped my mood. I felt stronger. I could feel muscles under my fat, but I could still feel my muscles. Um, But I was still gaining weight. Had you been strength training before you started? I the stronger been strength training. I'd been strength training okay. on machines. Okay. Um, but I definitely could feel a difference with free weights than I was feeling on machines. And I think now I know um, the protocols that you've created made a big difference for me. I was doing random machines. So got it. Yep. The ones that that are available, that the people aren't sitting on scrolling through their phone. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Yes. Exactly. It's like a good machine. I don't know what it works for, but. (laughs) Okay. So we're still, so at this point, how long had you been experiencing the 
weight loss resistance, basically. Um, at that point, it had been about a year and a half. So I knew um, that it wasn't just exercise. I knew that it had to be something in my diet. And like I said, I was eating very healthy. I was eating vegetables. I was eating, um, you know, things that that were good for me. Um, but then I decided as I was combing through the, ca- the cafe, and I would hear you mention several times in Q&As about the February 2020 challenge, the 28-day kickstart. So I removed the foods that you suggested might be causing a reaction, might be causing inflammation. And within the first four days of the kickstart, I lost five pounds and wow. percent of body fat. Wow. It, it was like you, I've heard you, you say to people, your body will release that fat. And for me, it was getting rid of those things that I believe now were causing me inflammation because since then I've just had a steady decrease and it's, it's slow. I'm not losing like a pound and a half a week, but slowly and steadily I'm working my way down. So question for you on the 28 day kickstart. So for listeners who are um, unfamiliar. So as a part of the stronger 12 week strength training program, there is also an opportunity to do a food side of things. If you want that extra boost, we actually, we make you wait. (laughs) We make you actually do the stronger program for a month to get that under your belt. And then we give it to you in the second month of your three month program. So you're not overwhelmed. Even those of you that say, I won't be, I won't be, I'll do it, I'll do it. (laughs) From a behavior change perspective, it's just so much easier that way. But there are two phases of that program. And one of them is removing foods that are most likely to be sense or you're likely to be sensitive to. And the second part is reintroducing. So my question is, (laughs) because many times someone will feel so much better and be like, no, 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 those are never coming back into my life. (laughs) And um, I really do want people to reintroduce because it's a a micronutrient thing. We want you to have a diverse diet if possible. Did you reintroduce? Um, I did. I did. it, it kind of spiraled a little bit from the 20 day, day kickstart because one of the things that you also talk about is doing the food sensitivity test. Mm-hmm. So I did a test and the results showed that I reacted to 34 foods. <laughs> I, I don't, I'm I don't just going to. <laughs> Sorry. So we're bumping into each other, but I, I want to let everybody know. So we describe kind of physically taking your body through it and removing certain foods. That's one phase or way to do a test and your body never lies. I actually think it's good to do that. In addition, Karen's saying that she did a lab sensitivity test and ironically or not. So there's no accidents. I just finished up a client, private client call. And she said, isn't there a way I can just have a, take a test and find out if I've got all those? I said, well, you can, but it's really best to do it from both sides. And so Karen, go ahead and tell us just for curiosity's sake, for listeners, what surprised you? Because I'm guessing something did. And so what were some of those foods? Well, I think that the thing that surprised me most was the number of foods um, because of interacting with people who were also doing the 28 day kickstart with me, um, who had done food sensitivity tests, they were experiencing two or three foods that they were sensitive in their test. But I was experiencing 34. Um, But one of the things I remember you saying over and over again, that it is likely the foods that we eat the most that are causing us problems. So if you recall, I was a vegetarian. Mm. So I ate a lot of eggs, nuts, beans, trying to get my protein. 
and I had osteopenia. So I was eating dairy, trying to get my calcium. And guess what I reacted to? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Shoot. <laughs> anything with dairy, anything with dairy. Um, eggs were my top. I had eggs every single morning, trying to get my protein right at the beginning of the day. Tree nuts, anything that I was eating, trying to get my protein and calcium. So I've also heard you say this. So I was eating a healthy diet, quote unquote, but it wasn't healthy for me. Yeah, so good. Okay, so when you found out, really, you just had your whole diet turned upside down, then what? <laughs> what do you eat as mm -hmm. a vegetarian? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I uh, did a lot of soul searching because I was a vegetarian for ethical reasons mm. and um, decided I was no longer going to be a vegetarian. Um, so I added meat back in and um, I have experimented, like you said, adding things back in. Um, one of the frustrating things is that I absolutely know I can't eat dairy. And um, if I add it back in, I immediately get gastrointestinal issues. So I know I cannot add that back in. So trying to come up with alternative milks when you can't mm -hmm. have nuts <laughs> is also wow. a challenge. So I've done a lot of flax milk, hemp milk, um, coconut milk is fine. Um, and I have added eggs in, but I try not to eat eggs like more than once a week or really pay attention to foods that have eggs in them so that I don't consume them too much. And then I seem to be okay. Got it. Got it. But they're no longer my source of protein. Wow. No. So how was it for you when you reintroduced meat into your diet after how long had it been? Uh, I had been a vegetarian for about seven years. Um, Significant. Yes. So I did it slowly um, because I knew that my body would not be able to digest that as easily. Mm -hmm. And so I, I ate very little for a, a few weeks and then, and then amped that up a little bit. So it, it was okay, but I had to do it slowly. Yeah. Great. Okay. And, and I still have some ethical concerns every time I eat, but I, I, I feel like I need to do what is right for my body. And I know now that that was not serving me well. So have you noticed um, positive changes or, or negative? So oh. we can tell the whole truth here, everything but the truth. <laughs> <laughs> um, absolutely. I, I'm now down 15 pounds and 2% wow. body fat. Um, I would still like to lose more fat, but I now know how because I know what was causing my problem in the first place. So I just want to thank you for putting together the health science in a way that was accessible to me and that was practical to me because it it's working for me. So thank you. Well, you're welcome and fantastic. And listeners, this was not designed just to be a love fest here. So, <laughs> so I <laughs> truly wanted to, to hear Karen's story. And and honestly, I am not sure until this just a, a few minutes ago that I knew you were a vegetarian. So I, I'm thrilled actually just for listeners who might be there as well. And I think doing it for ethical reasons, because I think that is one of the hardest things to change. I mean, you've made a major decision once in your life, and now there's this kind of forcing on you of potentially change. And it's, this may just be a podcast you listen to if you're a, a vegetarian, and it's maybe one of many that might plant the seed that do you want to consider what physically, what your physical health is either benefiting from or suffering from your habits and let that be what guides your decision, um, and I think that's just a, that's just a, there you are. It's a rhetorical question for anybody listening, but I appreciate you going there because I think I have noticed with vegans, certainly vegetarians as well. And 
you know, the more you open up to, um, say, the eggs and or maybe fish and seafood, at least if you can go there, the easier it gets to add protein that's of highest quality, meaning that it's got all the essential amino acids in a higher degree of profile. So there are complete proteins from your your vegetarian foods, as long as you combine them really well and you put that down to a science. But even then, your say your beans and your rice together won't have as much of each of those essential amino acids as say poultry will or or beef would. So it's a it's a real consideration. And not long ago, I released a podcast talking about essential amino acid supplements. I'm a big believer of food first, but I think if you're open to looking at amino acids, and it's not just plant-based chicks, by the way, those of us that eat animal protein, at some point, if you're wanting to lose weight, especially the amount of protein that you need to take in so that you're not losing muscle when you lose weight is much higher and you you can't eat that much. That's what I found. So um, supplements can come in handy. And I think we're going to see this going forward, that it is more common. So my question to you is, Karen, do you feel like you're able to eat enough protein now or do you have room to improve? And, and are you open to amino acid supplements? I definitely do not feel like I can eat enough protein. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I do smoothies in the morning. So I use, um, I use your protein. Um, but like all good things I've discovered, if I eat too much of them, I may develop a sensitivity toward it. And I don't want that to happen um, with protein powders. And so I, I try to limit that as well. So it is difficult to get all of my protein, and I have been um, studying amino acids since your your podcast, and um, I'm 99% sure that's a direction I'm going to have to go to get adequate protein. Mm-hmm. And I think for anybody who is adverse to taking additional supplements, I mean, I sometimes look at the counter over here and think this was looking like a pharmacy, (laughs) but, uh, (laughs) you know, I think if you can, um, say, okay, I'm going to commit for, you know, I'm going to try this for a month or commit to three months for those people who are going into the stronger program, for instance, you know, it's a great time to, you know, do the strength training program, combine it with the aminos. You, you may be changing two things, but, um, that still is a, is a wise possibility to consider if you're open to it, because you can always reassess and say, you know, this is number one, I'm not seeing any positive change coming from it. And maybe then I discontinue or you are, and then you've got some feedback. And for most of us, I think that's what we're looking for is give me some evidence of positive change. Now I'm motivated to continue doing that habit. Yes. Yes. I think that's a great, that's a great approach. Okay. So Karen, the hardest question, some of our um, tried and true listeners know what I'm about to ask. (laughs) You're, you're in every group you're popping in. Some might call you nosy, but you're actually in every group of flipping 50, really managing. And um, we've had some great kudos from our members about how well you take care of them and respond to them. So we certainly appreciate you around here. Is there a question that either about you and your story that I should have asked you so that a listener might be able to say, you know, have an aha moment from your story, taking it in for them or about something that you're noticing in our groups when it comes to going through programs Well, I think probably my biggest aha um, is I think one that I see in the groups over and over again, especially recently in the Hot Not Bothered group, was the fact that I don't have to exercise as hard or as long. Um, Having a a a two-day-a-week strength training and doing HIT 
two to three times a week. And then just moving, going out and doing the things that I love, like walking on the beach or like riding my bike or hiking or golfing. Um, I feel like because I'm not spending all of those hours in a dismal gym, I'm actually out enjoying life more and getting better results. I love that. Yeah. Great tagline there. (laughs) Okay. It is at the end of the show, listeners, when, and I know that for everybody in our Flipping 50 community, you will have a question for Karen inevitably, probably later today. (laughs) She will answer it. (laughs) And I usually ask, where can listeners find you? But I know the answer to this question. So when <laughs> when she's not walking on the beach and and of course when she's not rubbing it in, she's sorry. inside. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, not sorry, I hear over there. She's inside all of our flipping 50 private groups. And there is one that if you are currently not in a program or our membership that you can access as a podcast listener, Flipping 50 TV episode viewers are also there along with some of my YouTube channel subscribers. And that is the Flipping 50 Insiders group on Facebook. So it's a perfect place to ask questions or respond to them that get picked for Q&A episodes right here on the Flipping 50 podcast or inspire guests for the show. So letting me know who would you like to hear from, who would be a great guest. So if you've got a question about your exercise, whether to find specific or where to find specific resources on Flipping 50 that maybe blogs or podcasts that have already been written, that is a community of women just like you. So we'll put the links to the show notes to my TEDx talk because we mentioned that and we will potentially um, still be open for stronger if we're not because there's any delay in release of this podcast. I'll put the link and there's a notifications list. And Karen also mentioned the Hot Not Bothered group. That's a 10-day challenge. We do really without any regularity. It was something born out of the pandemic, but It's very popular and we will bring it back. There's just no date selected, but you can get on a notifications list for that as well. So what are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 today.